Hey, this is here from No Sleep Creative. In this video, you will animate this growing plant scene while learning these few things. Okay, so in After Effects, uh, I already have made this composition for you to start off with and I imported some uh, vector plants for you to animate. And the first thing we're gonna do is to create a new composition and let's call this plan underscore demo, right? This, so this will be our, our plan growing layer. And we're gonna click OK. And we are gonna select the pen tool and go to the bottom. Let's set it, open up our guides. And just click, uh, let's create three points and make sure to hold shift so that uh, the lines are straight. And we are going to set stroke color, you know, some, some other color. So maybe about white. And raise the stroke to be about 140 over here. And then let's go into our shape layer and open up the shape groups. Uh, you want to get rid of the fill, so let's uh, delete that. Open up the stroke. So let's set the line cap to be round cap. And then go into the wave and set the amount to be 30. And then the wavelength to be about 400. So suddenly we get a more turbulent uh, stem over here for the plan. And we can change the phase to change the design. Or you know you can change the set settings however you want. So I'm just going to go with this for now. And then, so the stem is done, right? Now we're gonna make, make the branches. So we're gonna hit Command D on the shape layers about four more times. And then now we are going to just adjust the, the points that we made, right? So let's click on that and just move it like that. So that's the, the reason why I have three points is so that we can easily just move the shape layers, uh, the, the, the middle points like uh, up and down the stem easily like that. Right, so we can just move this over here and just adjust the middle point. And then we can uh, adjust, do this for two more times, right? To get the design that we want. So maybe this one is looking a little bit too thick, right? So it might get to a point whereby you just want a specific uh, plant, uh, plant uh, you want to get to the property, uh, the path property directly. And you can actually go into this search bar over here and type in path. Right, and you can easily select the path that you want instead of opening all the shape groups and trying to figure out which one uh, is the one you're looking for. Okay, so let's just say this is a design that we want, right? Uh, of course, you can, you can modify it to perfection, and uh, it's kind of looking not uh, it's kind of not very not smooth right now. So we're gonna go into the effects and preset panel and drop in a simple choker effect. So let's select the layer and double click on it. And then you can set it to be about six, uh, around 30, right? And depending on your needs, you may even set it to be about 60. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Command Shift H to hide the layer controls. Uh, so maybe that's a little bit too much. So let's try 40. And then, you know, my design's not so good. Uh, let's show our layer control again. And let's move this branch on the top, the top left one, top left hand one. Uh, a little bit further because uh, the choking, you know, kind of affects our design, our original design uh, by a little bit. So we got to reposition everything properly. And then, so let's see. So this is, this is, yeah, so this is what I want. All right, so let's just say this is the final design. What we want to do next is go into our shape layer and add in a trim path. And then let's go to the bottom and set a keyframe down for the end and shift the keyframe down to about one second. Set, set it to zero at frame zero. Select both keyframe, right click, keyframe assistant, easy, easy in, right? So when we play it, there we go. We get this uh, plant growing effect. And then let's change the color to be uh, green. So we can drop in a fill, right? So I'm using FX console by Video Copilot to easily access effects. And so let's rename this plan uh, rename this shape layer to be plan. Let's command D to duplicate it, right? And then we are going to delete the stroke because we're going to create the veins. Let's rename this plan to be veins. And we can go into the search bar again, type in stroke. And if you, so we can manually select one by one by holding command, or we can uh, use the shortcut command option A. And this will select all the visible properties uh, you have open in After Effects. So with all the strokes selected, let's hit the backspace to delete it. And then let's drop in a new new stroke because we just want the stroke to be about five points and to be black as well. 
uh, and then let's, let's change this to be black, right? And then you can see nothing is showing up because we have a fill and we have a simple choker over here. So once we delete that, right, you can see the choke, uh, the choke up here. And there you go. That's how you animate this plant growing with ship layers. So it's looking cool, but what we want to do is to add some secondary motion by having it bend, uh, you know, sway left and right. And we can do so with a CC bend effect. So let's right click new adjustment layer and rename this to be bend. And we are going to go into our FX console and type in uh, CC bend it, right? And you can see we have some clipping uh, within this bounding box over here. All we have to do is shift the end, uh, the end point control a little bit on top of our plan and the start point control, right? To be outside the, uh, the composition. And when we increase the bend uh, values, you can see that it's not, you know, we don't get any clipping over there, right? So um, let's set the keyframe down for the bend, bend to be about negative uh, 15. Right? We want it to sway left and right. Let's press U. So I actually need to set a keyframe down at the front for zero. Let's delete that. So we want to start at negative 15 and then let's go into 15. And then we kind of want to have it go, you know, back to negative, negative 15 again. And we can just select both keyframes and just paste it like that over and over again. But this is a very time consuming process and we don't really get consistent uh, bending uh, so what we can do, right, let's undo this. Let me delete all these keyframes. Is to option click on this bend property over here and type in loop out, right, and double quote, and we're going to select ping pong. So what this ping pong uh, function do is it's going to, you know, just repeat these two sets of keyframes uh, going basically is just repeating it like that, like what it says, ping pong. So if I play it now, right, you know, you can see that it's just uh, repeating these two keyframes perpetually. And if I want to be slower, you know, it also follows the duration as well. So right now it's slower. To learn more about how this expression works, you can go to expression.ahancer.com and look up loop in or loop out. And you can see that there's four types of function that you can put in. So that the one that we use is called ping pong. And as it says, it repeats the specified segment alternating between forward and backwards. And you can give the other tree a try and see what happens. All right. But for now, I'm going to go back into After Effects and resume uh, our animation. Okay. So uh, the plan animation and bend is complete. And what we can do now is go into our uh, compositing scene over here is and go to our project panel and drop in the plan that we made. So I created a, you know, our plan is called plan, called, uh, plan underscore demo. And re I'm going to reposition the anchor point to be at the bottom. And then let's scale it down like that. Okay, I'm gonna change the color to be uh, green so you guys can see it clearly. And maybe let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so you wanna repeat this whole process, uh, you know, for however, however many plants that you want, right? And I already made a couple of plants in my, uh, in my project over here. So I'm just gonna use it so we can get to the, the compositing more quickly. Uh, I'm gonna drop in my plant one and two and I'm going to just place this one uh, I'm going to select both of them and let's set the anchor point to be at the bottom and let's scale it in there all right and I'm going to put this plan in the middle and this small plan on the left maybe at the front okay and then I'm just going to stagger them so they don't grow at the same time so it just looks more interesting that way all right, so next we want to just animate the, the plants in the background. And what we can do is go back into our plan demo pre-com and just steal the CC bend effect. So I'm going to command C to duplicate it and paste it onto this plan on the right hand side over here. So I'm going to solo it and paste it in and you can see that it disappeared, right? And that's because our point control are not aligned correctly. So we got to set this to be at the bottom, right? The start point control to be at the bottom. And let's zoom out and you can see the point control is over there and let's put it back on the top. And however, if you want to reposition this, this uh, plan, you can notice uh, clipping occurs, you know, when I move it left or right. And that's because, you know, when we use, when we move the layer, right, the our CC bend effect doesn't, doesn't know that the layer moved at all. 
And that's why we get this clipping problem over here. So to troubleshoot this uh, issue, we need to option click on the stopwatch on the start and end and type in the expression to come value. And we can just copy this and paste it onto the start property as well. And you can see it disappear again. And that's because the expression kind of changed our um, change our point controls uh, coordinates. So you got to select the effect again, and then you can see that the point controls has, you know, uh, has been offset to that uh, bottom right location. So you want to reposition it like that uh, as usual, right? And now when I shift, you know, when I reposition my plan over here, I don't get any clipping issues, all right? So keep that in mind when you're using this effect. Okay, so I'm going to undo the placement over here, and you can see that, right, it's bending like that. So we want to also make sure that the keyframes are set to the start. So the loop out will follow the keyframes uh, whenever it starts, right? So uh, make, like I said, you know, make sure the keyframes start at, when, we cop when you copy the effects from the pre-comp, make sure the keyframes are copied exactly at where it, sh where it should be. So you want to do this for other, other plans. So, but I'm not going to do that for now and just, you know, uh, jump right into the stylization and creating volumetric light. So uh, to do that, let's right click new solid and let's call this V and we're going to drop in a fill effect and to, I could have make it a white solid. Uh, so I'm just going to make use a fill to make it white. And then uh, what we're going to do instead of creating a mask to uh, creating a mask to have the volumetric light uh, diagonally, you know, uh, manually like that. What we can do, right, I'm going to undo that, is to use, you know, the rectangle tool and just draw a straight mass in the middle. And then we are going to drop in a directional blur. And we're going to set it to be about 300. So we get it faded at the bottom, right, like that. I'm going to hide my uh, layer controls by going to view, you know, show layer control. So next, what we're going to do is drop in a CC slant effect. And then we can change the slant direction, right? With the slider to change whichever direction we want. So instead of creating a mass that comes diagonally from the right hand side, we can just use one single mass, you know, that's straight down like that. And I'm just gonna uh, create a flickering effect by opening up the mass property, right? And set the opacity down to 50%. Not exactly flickering, but kind of have it like, uh, you know, turn on and off uh, slowly. Uh, so we're going to option click on the mass opacity and type in wiggle 0 0.550, right? So it's just going to randomize the opacity value uh, at, I think, 0 0.5 seconds uh, and around the range of 50%, right? So if you want it to be faster, you can set this to be a higher value, maybe 2.5, right? So, and if you want to be it slower, you can set it to be about maybe 0 0.3. So once we've done that, we can Command D on the mask and then double click on it, our duplicate, to just reposition it or maybe resize it, maybe even move uh, lower, you know, so that the light touches the ground. And let's Command D again and let's have it, this one, really thin. And then let's put it at the bottom, maybe in the middle where we can see it. Uh, so something like that. Once you adjust the mass according to how you want, you can you know play around with the blending mode and set it to be add or maybe screen. And so add seems you could screen seems to be a little bit kind of subtle effect. So depending on what you're going for, if you want it to be more stylized, you can change it to add. And that's a little bit too strong, so we can set opacity down to be about you know fifty percent, right? And we're gonna command D on this volumetric line and put it at the back. So we're gonna create some back volumetric line and set the blending mode to be soft light and soft lights right here. And we're gonna command shift H to show our layer control and then just adjust our mass. So maybe you just want it to be a bit bigger for the ones at the back, right? And gonna reposition this as well. And the last one. Okay, so just having that volumetric light. So that's a little bit too strong. So maybe the one I can set it to be about 25. Uh, and I'm gonna play it. As you can see, just adding those volumetric light really enhances the scene you know, by bringing some life, right? And we can actually take this further by adding some particles as you've seen in my preview animation. And this is actually done with a CC particle wall. 
And I'm gonna just gonna paste uh, paste the effect that I did over here into a solid, right? I'm gonna solo it so you can see what's going on. And it's basically just particles randomly popping up and then just uh, dying off after a few seconds. And uh, like I said, uh, it's using a CC particle walls and here are the settings, right? So I don't want to go too deep into it because that's not the main focus of this tutorial, right? So you can just copy this and then we can move on. Okay, so I'm going to unsolo this and then let's just go back into my scene. The last thing we want to do is to stylize the motion and add some noise to the scene. And then we can do so by right click new adjustment layer and we're going to drop in a posterize time and set the frame rate down to 12. And then we're also going to drop in a noise effect and set it to about 8%. As you can see, just adding these two effects really helps to enhance the aesthetic. And I think that's because, you know, when things are too clean or the animation too smooth, it doesn't feel right. So this is just little techniques you can, uh, you can use to kind of enhance uh, your project. And that's it for this tutorial. You can download this project file and try it out for yourself. I also included my preview animation project file so you can reference my process. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe so this tutorial can get to more people. As always, if you made something with this tutorial, please tag me on Instagram at TheDespinDo because I love to see what you came up with on your own. Alright, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.